Welcome to another DK Custom Products video. My name is Kevin, this is Dwayne, and today we're going to be talking about a subject that's a little bit different. Yeah, and it's no secret that Kevin and I really don't know what we're doing with these YouTube videos, but we had a customer and viewer send us a suggestion of a video, you know, we should make. This is from Stephen Cahill, who recently had an accident on his motorcycle, and this is what he had to say. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little apprehensive to ride again. That's part of the reason I was in such a rush to buy another after my baby was terminated. My injury is never going to be 100% the same as yours in reference to Kevin's accident. These are life-changing injuries. Yours on the highway, just the nature of highway riding leads to more serious injuries. Gear is huge, but most importantly, and where I missed the boat, was not carrying enough uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage. If I had 200K, I'd be a lot happier. Things you don't think about, things you don't think a lot about, but can save your ass literally and financially. Yeah. And we should start off the video. We're not insurance agents. We're not financial advisors. So this is just our opinion. You know, do not make decisions that uh, based on what we say. We're just sharing our thoughts and what we've done personally so, you know, consult your financial advisor or insurance <laughs> agent. Don't make any decisions based on what we say. Right. So, um, yeah, what happens if you get hit by somebody and there are serious injuries with the way that hospitals cost and how much our motorcycles cost, it can be not just life changing in that I'm permanently disabled, Stephen's mm -hmm. permanently disabled. Right, I think a lot of us, we know you know, the process of insurance claims and having an accident in your car, but it's a whole new level on a motorcycle. Yeah. It's not the same. There's a few things I, uh, that are important, I think after, because Stephen said, you know, we should do a video about what happens after an accident. And and we're going to talk about some of the things about after, but also talk about uh, something that you can do before an accident that may or may not happen down the road so that after is not as bad as it would be. Um, obviously, I think it's important to, you know, do all the physical therapy that you can so that you can get back as much as you can. You know, that's just maybe common sense. I think another thing that I did is learn. The accident I was in was not my fault. The other guy got a ticket, the other guy's insurance had to pay, it was his fault. But like in a previous video we made, it was my fault. Yeah. Because I could have made up for his lack of paying attention and avoided it. But here's the biggie. And here's the one that's hard for a lot of people to um, part uh, with their money in case something might happen, mm -hmm. okay? And again, we are not financial advisors, <laughs> we're not insurance agents. Uh, this, These are just our thoughts. And that is have enough insurance to cover the worst case scenario. So, uh, the guy who hit me had the minimum required insurance. As most people do, just to be legal. Yeah, which in Tennessee is $50,000. So he had $50,000 insurance, which he was completely legal in having that little amount of insurance. He was, got ticketed, was found at fault. It was his fault. There was no question it was his fault. He admitted it was, I mean, he was going the wrong way on the interstate. <laughs> it was his fault. His insurance paid. They paid the 50,000. Well, the bike was 20. And the first eight or 10 hours of me in the hospital was more than 30. Oh yeah, for sure. That 50,000 insurance didn't last the first day of the accident didn't even last into the second day of the accident. And I wasn't back up and moving again, happened in August, and it was 
late G November, early December when I took my first step. So that's what, four months? Yeah. Three and so, a half months? So yeah, he was at fault, but it's safe to say you suffered the consequences. Right. So the, so most people, the vast majority of people have either no insurance <laughs> or they have the minimum insurance yeah okay and most of the time a motorcycle if they're involved in an accident with someone it's going to be with someone in a car who's going to go on living their life just as normal while you're laid up in bed and you're like you said as a motorcyclist you're going to be the one struggling with the fact that they had only the minimum amount of insurance or no insurance. So when a situation like this occurs, which occurred with Stephen and occurred with me, I'm sure it occurs with many, many other people who are on a motorcycle get hit by an inattentive cager, is their insurance pays out. It covers the first day or two or three. Maybe it covers the first week. But then their insurance runs out. So what do you do? Well, I was in that exact situation and there were two choices. One was to go after the guy personally because he's still liable. Even though his insurance paid out, he is still liable. He was still the one who caused the accident. He's still liable for the bills, uh, for my bills that were incurred because of his mistake. But he didn't have anything. He didn't have anything. If we would have sued him, he would have just declared bank bankruptcy. So he didn't have anything. Now, the thing is, is that people who have a lot of assets, they probably have a lot of insurance and then you're yeah. good. But most people are living paycheck to paycheck. They don't really have anything. You can't take away a person's house, even though it was their fault. So since they don't have anything, there's something that is called underinsured slash uninsured motorist coverage. And that's so if you're in an accident with somebody who either has no insurance or doesn't have enough insurance, then your insurance can kick in. Look, at, we never want to be in an accident, but we cannot 100% control. That situation, I could have avoided it. But there are situations that are unavoidable. That's part of the danger of riding a motorcycle. I mean, if you're going down the road, there's cars on the right, left, behind you, and all of a sudden a semi-truck tire comes flying at you, you're either gonna get hit by that tire or you're gonna hit the car to the right or left of you, or you're gonna slow down without looking in re your rear view mirror and get rear-ended yeah. by the car behind you. There are some situations that are unavoidable. So it's important to have underinsured uninsured motorist coverage and that's where you pay a premium for a mistake someone else might make and that's where it really hurts it hurts to every month or once a year or every six months pay a premium on an insurance policy for a mistake that someone else might make and they should pay for it but they don't have the ability to pay for it so a lot of people don't have enough uninsured, underinsured. Fortunately for me, I had $600,000 underinsured, uninsured motorist coverage. So when his 50,000 ran out before the first 24 hours were up, I had a $600,000 cushion there to rely on. Now, you, th you think, you think, that it's your insurance company who's looking out for you? No, your insurance company doesn't care about you. Here's how it works. And I'm not an expert, don't take my advice, but I got gained a lot of knowledge going through this process. It took over three years to get my insurance company to pay because what happens, your, my insurance company, when I am in an accident, it's my fault, covers me with the other person. But the uninsured, underinsured part of your policy is actually covering the other person who doesn't have enough. So literally, my insurance company's lawyers 
argued on behalf of the guy who hit me. They become my ad, my insurance company becomes my adversary when you're looking at the underinsured, uninsured, because they're covering that person. They're not covering you. So they actually tried to pay as little as possible on his behalf. And I had to fight my own insurance company to get them to pay. Wow. But they did end up paying, not the full 600,000, but an appropriate amount for all the bills that were incurred and for my permanent lifelong disabilities. Well, you know, there you go. Insurance is a necessary evil, but it is necessary and it is suggested. So contact Jake from State Farm to get your insurance right. <laughs> but another thing Steven mentioned was being apprehensive to get back on the bike. So how do you overcome that? You know, I don't want to call it PTSD, but how do you overcome that fear and, you know, get back on two wheels? Well, you know, I think for everybody, it's different. Um, it never entered my mind that I wasn't going to continue riding. It was just a matter of if I was going to be on a trike or if I was mm. ever going to be able to ride a two-wheeler again. Mary, on the other hand, my wife, who rides all over the North America with me, for the first two months after the accident, she made it very clear she was never getting on the motorcycle again. And she's a good enough woman that she never said, tried to talk me out of riding. Yeah. I think she knew better than to do that. But she said she was never getting on a bike again. And I didn't say anything to try and convince her otherwise. I never, when you, started working with DK, you already had a motorcycle, you'd already been riding your, you know, whole adult life, right? Yeah. But look, we have some people there who don't ride. Some people work at DK don't ride. I've never tried to convince anyone to ride. Because if I convince someone to ride, and they start riding, and they get in an accident and get hurt, then I would feel that sort of on me. If a person yeah. wants to ride, they ride. If they don't want to ride, they don't ride. It's never going to be on me that I tried to get somebody to ride yeah. and then they got hurt. I, I've taken that a step further and I've had friends who I told them maybe they're not cut out for motorcycles. Ah. Scores on it. Oh. I thought he was going to go. <laughs> For, so for the first two months, Mary said, you know, she was never going to ride again. She saw the pain I was in. She went through her own whole trauma of being at the hospital and them not telling her even if I was alive or going to live or whatever. And, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, it was totally understandable that she said she was never going to ride again. But about two months in, she came into the room. I'm laid up in bed, I can't get out of bed. She came into the room and said, you know, today's a beautiful day to ride. I wish you could take me out for a ride. <laughs> and I go, oh, okay. I guess you are gonna ride again. Yeah, yeah, I'm over it. But here's the thing. I was never questioned if I was gonna ride again. But if Mary had been on the bike when I was in the accident, that would have bothered me a hundred times more, her getting hurt yeah. than me getting hurt. Because she has no control over whether or not I get in an accident or avoid an accident. She's the passenger, right? So I am infinitely more careful now with her, and I don't know if I had apprehension, but I just have a whole new level of awareness to not ever, because I know the pain I went through. And if I ever caused another person, my wife, to go through that kind of pain, that uh, it, it's just, it, it's crazy to even, you know, contemplate that. Yeah. So I'm just super, 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 careful you know uh all the time but e even more so when she's on the bike because you never know what could happen uh and i wouldn't 
blame anybody for deciding, hey, it's time to hang it up. You know, I don't want to get, I don't want to get another accident, and get another 22 broken bones. <laughs> I mean, I, I hopefully if I made that decision, nobody would hold it against me. Uh, and um, it's, it's a calculated risk you take when riding. But if you're going to take that calculated risk, make sure that if there is something that happens, that you don't get stuck holding the bag for yes. someone else's not having, you know, the ability to pay for their mistake. But on the apprehension, I don't know. I mean, it's just, you know, it, it's just, you know, the Franklin T-Bar, all the pros and cons. You just got to sort of weigh it out and be... The way I dealt with it is I'm just being far more careful. I am 62. I am not as quick a reaction as I used to be. I'm not as athletic as I used to be. There will come a time probably that I stop riding two wheels simply because if I do go down through no fault of my own, hopefully I will never do it through a fault of my own. <laughs> but if I go down through no fault of my own, at some point, it just takes too long to heal. Yeah. And on two wheels, you're way more likely to go down than on three wheels. So, you know, obviously this video isn't about motorcycle parts or, you know, how to improve your bike. It's more or less, you know, I find value in learning from experience, but I also find value in learning from someone else's experience. So, you know. Oh, it's a lot cheaper to learn from someone else's cheaper. experience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks to your accident, uh -huh. I now know what to do and what not to do. So we want to hear from you guys. Leave us a comment. Let us know about your own experiences. You know, if you've had an accident, if you had to deal with insurance claims, or, you know, if, if you had apprehension about getting back on two wheels, how did you overcome that? Because understandable, you know, if you have an accident that has the potential to change the course of your life, you know, you might not want to partake in that activity again that, you know, that that happened with. So how'd you get over that apprehension and just let us know. Yeah, we look forward to your comments because this is just, you know, our perspective. And we know that there's a lot of other ones out there. So your comments will be useful not only to us, but to everybody else watching the videos. Yeah. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, because it's not that enjoyable of a subject, <laughs> found it useful, give it a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell so we'll be updated when our next video comes out. And please subscribe to our channel. It helps us out a lot and it's free. And y'all ride safe and insured out there.